Welcome to TLC Tyson's Corner, folks. I'm Dr. Holzman, and today we're going to do a seminar. It's the same seminar we, we do uh, kind of weekly. And the idea behind it is just kind of a casual discussion for you. Um, you'll, you'll get to ask questions of a surgeon, and, and it's usually very informative. Um, it moves rather quickly. After we're done with this, you're going to go back into the rooms individually, of course. We're going to do a lot of testing on you. We're going to determine whether you're a good candidate for the procedure today. We're going to have you meet with the counselor. So there's a lot of steps that you're going to go through today. Um, and hopefully, you're all going to be great candidates, and you're all going to be um, happy patients of ours. Um, so this first step, I apologize for the group seminar discussion. Some, pe some people don't like group seminars, but um, it actually helps sometimes for, for you because somebody might be thinking of a question to ask that you might not have been thinking about. So it is very casual. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along. And um, I'm, I'm a big believer in education before the surgery. So I, I think that it's really important information that you know this stuff, and hopefully you'll get something out of this. Um, I am a corneal specialist. Uh, a corneal specialist, um, of course, I'm a board-certified ophthalmologist. I, have to, of course, have to be a board-certified ophthalmologist to do this. But I went on for extra training and, be, and took a fellowship in corneal surgery. So this is a cross-section of an eyeball. And you got the front and the back. And the very front of the eyeball is called the cornea. It's actually the window of the eye. Okay, so what we're doing in these procedures is we're changing the shape of the window of the eye. So all we're doing is changing the shape of the cornea. We're not dealing with the internal mechanisms of your eye at all. Okay, so it's just a very kind of superficial treatment, changing the front window shape. The fact that I'm a corneal specialist is a good thing. This is corneal surgery. It separates me a little bit from the rest of the pack of docs that do LASIK. Um, and for that reason, we get a lot of referrals uh, from other places, outside places, because of my corneal expertise. So it, it, is, a, it is a little bit different uh, in that regard. Now, in terms of the seminar, we do this to educate patients. We do this, I don't, I don't think you need motivation. You're sitting here, so hopefully you're motivated already. And we want to do this to answer questions and provide some interaction for you. You, you might be amazed that 20% uh, of patients that come in this door are turned away. Now, it varies very much based on the month. Some months it's 15%, some months it's 20%, some months it's 25%. But we're a very conservative center. So you have to understand, we're not going to operate on you unless we think that you're going to do well. Okay? It's very simple. We want to eliminate a lot of the risk or most of the risk before we start the surgery. So by doing so and being very conservative and telling patients you're not a candidate, every time I sit down to operate, I feel like I know the patient's going to do really well. Because I, I just, you know, because of our experience and the state of the art equipment we have um, and the fact that we're operating on excellent candidates, it means that you're going to do well. And it makes, it allows me to sleep well at night uh, knowing that. So it, it, you can rest assured that we're not going to operate on you unless you're a perfect candidate for this procedure. And that's very important. Information on me is basically I trained up and down the East Coast and I moved here about 11 years ago to open this center and um, have been doing refractive surgery for 20 years. So I've been doing this uh, since 1991. I've done over 50,000 procedures, and um, that's a lot of surgery. So I, I've seen a lot of things over the years. I've been with refractive surgery since the beginning. We were doing radial keratotomy um, years and years ago, and you might remember what that was when we were using uh, diamond blades and things like that. So it's evolved tremendously to today, and uh, it's at the pinnacle of, I can't, uh, uh, <laughs> it's just an absolutely a fantastic procedure to have done today very, very safe and very effective. Who has it done? Well, we do a lot of occupational surgery at this center. We do a lot of uh, military. We do a lot of pilots. We do a lot of um, FBI. We, we do a lot of firefighters. These are people that require good vision for their jobs. What I'm most proud about is that we do a lot of eye doctor's eyes. I've done at least 30 or 40 local eye doctor's eyes in the community. Um, certainly, they know where to go if they want to have their eye surgery, and they come here. So I'm very, very proud of that fact. And um, and I've operated on many, many more of their family members. So uh, that's something that I'm kind of proud of. But you're probably here because you can't tolerate glasses or contacts, and that's the most common reason. And you have a refractive error. That's what makes you need to wear glasses or contacts. So you are either nearsighted or farsighted with astigmatism. Okay? And some of you have a lot of astigmatism, and some of you have a little bit, but most of you have some. And what nearsightedness is, is you take your glasses off, and you can see it near. Okay, it's appropriately named. So you take your glasses off, you see something up close, but you can't see the world. It's all blurry out beyond, beyond this point. And that's because your focal point is right here, or right here if you're really bad, okay, which some of you might be. 
So, um, so the problem with, with nearsightedness is that the cornea is too steep. So the, the corneal dome sticks out a little too far. Um, and when you look at a distant street sign, let's say it's this object out here, a street sign, it's focused right inside the jelly of the eye, and it needs to fall on the back wall of the eye in order for you to see it clearly. So what you're doing is wearing glasses or contacts in the front, which are just basically pushing the image of the street sign backwards so that your brain can see the street sign, and that's how your glasses work. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to flatten the dome just to the appropriate amount for your particular eyes, and when we do that, we're going to be able to move the street sign's image backwards onto the back wall of the eye. Okay, so it's just like you're wearing your glasses or your contacts, but you're not. Okay? Astigmatism is a term uh, that basically means that you have a curve in your cornea. Okay? So the front window of your eye is curved a little bit more than average. So it's not as perfectly round as it should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to reshape that at the same time we're treating your nearsightedness so that the curve is no longer there and so it's more round. Farsightedness is the opposite problem. People who are farsighted, their corneas are too flat. And look at where the street sign end up, ends up. It's, it's behind the wall of the eye. Okay, so what we have to do is the opposite. We have to steepen the cornea and move their street sign image forward. Okay, so these are all treatable with the laser. Okay, now one thing I want to mention, and at this point most people are always wondering about me because I'm pretty much the only one in the room not wearing glasses. Um, and they are always, well, did you have eye surgery? Did you have LASIK? And the answer is I've always had good eyesight, okay? So I've never needed LASIK and I don't need to wear glasses or contacts. I just see well, okay? But I'm telling you this for a reason because um, we're going to get to the next slide and you'll understand why I'm telling you this. No matter whether you're like me and you see really well or you're like yourselves, nearsighted with astigmatism, when you get into your 40s, you're going to develop a condition called presbyopia. So everybody gets this condition. It doesn't matter whether we're young uh, or at near, a young nearsighted person or a young farsighted person. When we get into our 40s, we're going to develop presbyopia. What happens? Well, inside the eye, there's a lens. And you can think of this sort of like the lens of an autofocus camera. When you take a picture of something, you can take a picture of a distant object with, the, with your camera, or you can take a picture of a close object, and the lens inside there is going to autofocus for that particular zone that you're taking the picture of. So with the eye, it's the same thing. Take me, for instance. I see really well. I look at something at a distance. I go to read something. My lens has to reshape itself, just like the cameras, to see up close. And so when that happens, um, I can read. Okay. Now, if I'm in my 40s, which I, I am, my lens starts to weaken. So the autofocus starts weakening, and I'm no longer able to just easily read when, you know, my lens is no longer able to easily change shape, so it's harder for me to read. So eventually, you start holding things a little further out, and eventually, your arms are too long, your arms too short, you can't hold it far enough, and you have to go to the magnifying glasses. You go to the CVS, and you buy a pair of reading glasses. So that's what's going to happen to all of you. Okay, this looks like a young group, so this is boring conversation right now, but when you do get into the 40s, you will need to deal with the reading glasses. It's not because you had LASIK, it's because you developed presbyopia. It's an age-related condition. And it continues to worsen from the point where 45 until we're, we're 65. So it keeps getting worse. Right? And there's really no cure for this right now. However, if you were over 40, and you were interested in having LASIK, and you did not want to go right to wearing reading glasses from the drugstore, there is an option. And the option is called monovision. And what monovision is, is it deals with the fact that one of our eyes is more dominant over the other. So in my case, it's my right eye. It's my dominant eye. So I would take a picture or shoot a camera with my um, right eye, or shoot a gun with my right eye, OK? So what we would do is we would fix the right eye, the non-dominant eye, for 20-20, for distance, and then we would leave the other eye a little bit nearsighted so it could read a menu. And so you've got one eye seeing better at distance and one eye seeing better at close, and the two eyes together work r rather well together usually. We can test this out for patients before the surgery, and, and um, usually that seriously uh, decreases the patient's need for needing reading glasses. Okay, so that's something called monovision. Now, we don't do that on pilots, and we don't do that on surgeons, but on people who are just kind of, um, you know, want to decrease the dependency on reading glasses, we do that. 